I'm walking in the woods a couple days ago and walking through Theater Worth Park and who do I run into but Humbird, <laughs> a.k.a. Siri Udlin. Mm-hmm. Hi, Siri. Hey. Good Hi, to Mike. see you again. Good to see you too. Thanks Twice for having me. in three me. days. I know. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. We're here to talk about your new record, Right On, which is fabulous. I'm just really enjoying it. Thank you. This is album number three for you and uh, it's a little different it's a little bit mm-hmm. you've got some some uh, person some edginess to your mm. personality in this one i think <laughs> tell cool. me about the creation of this record yeah this record is definitely a little grittier yeah. and a little rougher around the edges and it was recorded to tape in kind of a old school style so there's also a warmth to it and uh yeah it was really fun to lean into some newer emotions within this band. I think in past records, I've leaned more into like reflective contemplative spaces. Mm -hmm. And when I was writing these songs, I often was angry. (laughs) And um, in recording the music, we had a blast, like just so much fun. And I think that both of those emotions added a lot of energy to the process, um, a lot of like forward momentum. And I I think it's, you can feel it on the record, which is really exciting. Did you start writing it like, right after the pandemic or during the pandemic or I mean how why were those emotions there yeah during and after Mm -hmm. and honestly we recorded the record over three years ago now but I still resonate with a lot of the emotions as I'm singing them today so definitely still sitting with those feelings of anger and despair and uh, I think it's important to sit with those things. And music is a place where you can do so, but not actually give up on anything. You just metabolize it, move through it. So Anger about what? Yeah, I think there was a lot that I was working through on like a personal individual level and then living in South Minneapolis and reckoning with the events of George Floyd's murder and how it changed the neighborhood and how I perceived the city to be shifting and changing and people in power really not doing enough, but observing my neighbors giving everything and um, wanting to give voice to those emotions. But that paired with starting to tour again around the country and seeing, you know, the miles and miles of monocrops across the country and the gas station stops and connecting with people in different regions and seeing how beautiful a place can be, but also how complicated, um, all of that mixes together in this record. Kind of like growing up in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a loss of innocence. If (laughs) Humbird was, the band was actually like a small child. I feel like we're in our teenage years now. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Yeah. You recorded it with Shane Leonard Mm -hmm. um, and you said live to tape. Explain what that means. Yeah. um, Basically, there's a tape machine in the room and uh, Shane tells you to go and you just have a couple tries, which is different than a digital approach where you have infinite tries. If you don't get it perfect, you can just try again and you can do that ad nauseum. Like you never necessarily have to settle on one thing, but the tape has such a physical quality to it and it really requires the band to be together and present in the room. And also there's really fun imperfections on every song because it was less Mm -hmm. about like, did we nail it perfectly? And it was more about, are the emotions there? Is the vibe there? And it was a really refreshing way to make a record. I turns out I like strongly prefer it. Really? Yeah, I didn't expect that. (laughs) And you've worked with Shane before, haven't you? Yeah, Yeah. Shane produced our first record, Pharmacon. That's that's Mm -hmm. right, that's right. I really like the way the trio sounds. It reminds me of awesome the '60s, maybe uh, you know, Cream or mm-hmm. The Who or mm-hmm. something. There's some really Amazing. cool stuff going on playing as a trio. Thank you. Do you like it that way too? I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's so fun, especially as someone who came up as like a singer songwriter, very much steeped in the folk tradition. Um, playing with the full band and experimenting with the sounds and learning from my bandmates on like, well, how do we up the ante? How do we make this even more just ridiculously fun? Um, (laughs) I've loved it. Yeah. 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 So if this is a trio sound, what's the next thing for you, the next record going to bring for you? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like this record has taken such a long time to come to fruition. It's been a really long process. 
and I'm always rushing to the next thing and looking over the horizon. But for whatever reason in this season, I've been like, how about you just chill out? Yeah. Turn up the guitar amp, have fun, see what happens when it happens. So yeah. we'll see. <laughs> Getting ready to go on tour. You just uh-huh. signed with a label. Uh-huh. This is big news since the last time we talked. It's true. Yeah. A lot has changed. <laughs> For the good. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. We're riding the wave of things changing and exciting stuff happening, but trying to stay grounded in the actual music. Yeah. For sure. The CD release show is happening on the 31st at the mm-hmm. Turf Club. Yep. Should be a fun night. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Siri, congratulations on the record. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for coming in. Thank you for having us. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.